How to control the time scale in Godot using a slider. Someone asked us about the clock speed in our Kepler orbits videos. It lets us change the game engine clock using a slider node. We use this method to control the time scale in our orbit simulations, and we'll be using it in several upcoming videos as well. Watch to the end of the video for other ways this time scaling can be added to a game or a simulation. Our simulations use the Godot engine's built-in timescale property to control how fast the clock is moving. Here's how to do it in five easy steps. First, we'll create the root scene and give it a script. For now, we'll leave the script code blank. Now we'll create the slider that controls the engine timescale property and we'll give it some minimum, maximum, and step size for each tick in the slider. In this example, we'll give the slider a 0.25 speed increment per tick, with a maximum speed of 32 and a minimum speed of 0 for pausing. This gives us a good range of slow and fast speeds to work with. We'll start the slider at a value of 1, so the simulation starts at normal speed, although we'll initialize it in code later as well. Then we'll create a basic display node with some labels to show the current engine speed and the current clock time. With the slider in place, we can now hook up a slider signal to the script using the Signals tab. We'll use the value change signal and connect it to a new function in the script. To finish the code, we'll add two variables and fill out a few important functions. The total delta and game tick variables will hold the clock counter details. The total delta property will keep track of the total time internally, but the game tick property is what we will display on the labels. In our ready function, we'll set the speed label with the starting time scale. In our slider signal function, we'll add code that sets the engine speed and label using the current slider value. With this in place, the user can now move the slider to change the speed of the simulation. In our process function, we'll add the latest delta to the total and store it in the variable we created earlier. We'll check the total delta to see if it is time to update the game tick counter, and we'll set the clock counter label with the current game tick. And there we have it. A simple slider that can be used to speed up, slow down, and pause Godot simulations, and even some games. Controlling the timescale could also be done using hotkeys instead of using a slider widget. For example, you could use the tab and spacebar hotkeys to cycle through preset speeds and pause or unpause the clock. Several popular colony survival games use this style of game time control. Keep in mind, there are limits on using this timescale method to speed up components of a game rather than a simulation scene, mainly that it changes the speed of everything in the engine and you have no control over any individual components. A few more things to consider for the interested developer. The higher the timescale, the less precision you may have during simulations. Our orbit videos need good precision, so we generally keep the max speed to 32 for that reason. Another thing to watch for are variable overflows. The code here does not include any overflow protection, so long-running simulations will crash unexpectedly at some point. Always account for overflows in your long-running code. And finally, depending on your needs, you may want to look at using the physics process function instead. We've had more luck with the standard process function, but the constant delta in the physics process might be something to look further into, especially if you're using the Godot physics engine. Hope you found this helpful. Let us know if there are other tutorials or concepts that you want to see. It would mean the world to us if you stopped by and subscribed.